So um, we'll go on to our next presentation now, um, and that is on the Ida Darwin site, the former Ida Darwin Hospital site. And we have Gary Goodwin from Morris Homes. Um, good evening, Gary. Um, so good evening. over to you, and uh, please just bear in mind the, our time frame, will you? So uh, if you yep. can keep to time, please, so we have enough time for questions. I'm Thank you. Okay, um, happy to share my screen if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Can everybody see, can everybody see my screen? Okay, yeah. my name is Gary Goodwin from uh, Morris Homes Limited. I'm the Group Planning and Design Director. Um, we've been working on this project now for, for an awful amount of time. Um, we first um, put together a sifting grid with uh, Homes England in September of 18. Um, we then put in a, a bid in accordance with their bid requirements in December 18. Um, our pre-app started in November of 19 and then we've had a pandemic in amongst that and uh, eventually submitted our planning application. It's in at the moment in December uh, of last year. So the, the pre-app on, it, on its own lasted for, for 12 months. Um, we're a partner with Homes England. We're pre-qualified as um, uh, under, under their strict regime as a, as a suitable developer for their sites. Um, so we're invited to, to submit a, a bid for this uh, development in accordance with the development framework and the outline planning consent that already existed for the site. Um, so what I've done is I've, this is by no means, and I'm happy to share the full design documents. It is available on the planning portal uh, or, and uh, obviously South Cam's own planning website. Uh, but if anybody wants a copy of the full design statement, um, there's, a, there's a lot of information in there. I think it's 50 pages long. So what I've tried to do is just cut through that um, and um, just cut it down to a minimum to show you the highlights. So this is the site, um, an aerial shot of it. Um, uh, those that are familiar with the site will know that this is the, the junior school in the corner. And these are the former Ida Darwin buildings, some of which now have been demolished. Um, the site is to be developed in phases. Um, so this being the pink area being the first phase, the second area uh, phase of the development will be the yellow area and the school is retained in the corner. Um, moving on. So what we've done um, in conjunction with um, Trevine um, Monterio of the urban design section in South Cams and three different planning officers, because we've changed planning officer three times, um, is we've explored the context of Fullbourne. Um, and so this is our contextual study, um, which shows um, us looking at the various different residential styles in Fullbourne. And also in amongst that, we've had the village design guide, which has emerged. And so Trevine has been particularly helpful in engaging with the parish council. Um, the bid documents that we submitted with the, um, for the original site with Homes England um, had a very contemporary scheme, albeit within the same structure. And we discussed this with the parish council and asked them what their preference was with the emerging design guide. Um, and the preference from South Cams as well as planners and urban designers. Uh, and, and very much the, the, the preference came back for a more traditional scheme, which, which had references to some of the historical context of, of Fullborn rather, and also the surrounding area and the surrounding villages, rather than um, something that's too contemporary modern. Um, uh, although we were prepared to do either or and had prepared bids for, uh, prepared um, proposals for both. So this just picks up on some of the detailing that we've got around the area, particularly um, uh, uh, because it's quite an eclectic mix in Fullbourne. We've got houses that were built in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, um, and, and the, the historic village is, is, or the historic part of the village is quite small, um, but that's our contextual study of the area. Then we moved on to the structure plan that had been produced and the various different um, layouts. So what you can see in the top left is the approved outline master plan with the woodland retained in the middle, uh, an area of open space through it, a community building at the end, um, an open space around here with the end of the site, going back to that original image, all laid out as public open space. 
So these were various iterations and, and, and I, it's very difficult for me to show you the difference between them and you might not even be able to see the difference, but take it from me, they're, they're all radically different. Um, but these are different workings of the scheme um, that we went through with the uh, with with the planning and the um, and uh, urban design departments. Um, so what we did is we settled on a, a master plan here, and bearing in mind the village design guide, what we were trying to do was achieve a more informal setting. So um, shared surface roads, wide verges that vary in width instead of two meter, you know, instead of regular two meter. Um, foot, uh, verge widths and footpath widths that, that are di dictated by, by the county highways department and their regulations. So, and try it, try and get the feeling of a, a village that's been developed over time. Uh, these images across the top are from some of the local development, some developments that we've done nearby. So we've um, been working on RAF Alconbury. Uh, we've been developing up as far as um, uh, Upton in Northampton and working with South Northampton, their design guide. Uh, and so they start to introduce some of the elements that we saw on the study um, of the local uh, architecture and detailing, and they start to introduce how they might create places on the scheme. So this is our um, placemaking, or this is how we start to develop character areas. So we've got a character area along the bottom, uh, which is step back from the main road. And that's uh, very much detached houses, but with some, what we're calling, it, it's, it's, it's a reference to the arms houses, which um, courtyards, which you can see more detail of, um, to try and break up the frontage. We've then got a character area around the woodland. We've got a character area along the railway, which also fronts our um, uh, ecological buffer that we're creating. And then we've got suburban links between those. And what you can see now is, is how each of those character areas is picking up on various elements of the surroundings and also picking up on um, the local architecture. So in here, um, you can some of these are actually, because there's a 40% requirement for affordable housing as well. And what we want to do is make sure the affordable housing is tenure blind. Um, and the mix requirement is very strict as well. And there's an apart, there's a requirement for some apartments as affordable housing. But what we didn't want to do is blazingly obvious blocks of apartments that belong to the affordable housing. So this is an affordable housing unit. They're broken up into small units. So this is just uh, three, six, nine units. Um, but it's designed to look like um, a fairly large house. And it, and it actually forms a focal point within, the air, within one of the characters areas. This is actually four one bedroom maisonettes in this area here. And it's designed to look like some of the workers' cottages that are associated with the pump station in Cherry Hinton. So it, it, it has those reference to, to, um, to the local surroundings. So here again, you can just, just, we've just zoomed in on some of the site frontage here where we've got the arms houses courtyard. And again, we're just picking out some of those local details and showing you how those have been incorporated into the street scenes. So moving on. So this is our final layout. This is what we've submitted for. Um, so you can see the green open space. You can see the ecology corridor. You can see this large area of open space here and the community building that we have in here. Um, the, the, the woodland itself is gonna have some sustainable urban drainage systems in and we've got some more drainage systems here. So this again, just shows you some of the placemaking that we've got. So just zooming in on some of those apartments, those affordable apartments there and how they will look and where they've drawn their references from again. Gary, um, to, this is the frontage. Um, Gary, yes. just, sorry, just to give you a heads up on time. Um, if, if you could be yep. thinking of drawing the presentation to a close, just so you've got time to take questions. Yeah, okay. fine. Yeah. Right. So this is the uh, the arms houses we talked about, and this area is the community centre, uh, and and this is a typical community centre that we've designed up recently in Fen Stanton. Um, it's not the finished design. There's a process for that which has to be done after we get reserve matters, uh, which I can go into if anybody's got any questions about that. But it, it, it's a case of offering the land, then designing up proposals with in in conjunction with the parish council. Um, so just to talk about the landscape proposals, um, so we're creating a linear public open space along the edge of the site here. 
we've got public open space going all the way through the development and we've got some interesting woodland features uh, for the children to enjoy and we've got um, community assets such as a community orchard uh, next to the community centre. I've got a picture of the windmill there because I know the windmill is particularly important. Um, I'll skip past the community centre because we've already spoken about that. So having studied the long views of the windmill, there were two areas that we could see the windmill from, um, very obvious areas. One was right down at the bottom of the site here. I'll zoom in a little bit. It was right down at the bottom here where there's a gap in the hedge and it's just a natural view to that. And that's right by the existing school. The other one, because the site rises slowly from, this, uh, from the east and over to the west, so the levels here are quite a bit higher. So what we've done is we've created a journey um, which, which takes in the windmill views. So this is the start of our linear walk along the front of the site. There's a viewing platform in there. Uh, there's a seating area. And as you, you go through the linear open space and all the existing trees, you make your way into the larger open space. And then we're building a large raised platform here, um, which will incorporate some uh, some some uh, information boards, perhaps some some uh, uh, viewing arrow show you what you can see in the distance, and that's the journey of the windmill views. And um, we we feel quite strongly that um, you know our landscape architect Barnes Walker have done a fantastic job of of, of incorporating that. Um, so I'll just quickly go back because I skipped over it. This uh, is the community building. I, sorry, Gary, can I ask you to draw it to a close? So yes, that's, that that was the last slide. So the community right. building. Um, it's very much generic at the moment. Um, it's designed to mirror um, a, an apartment building next to it, and it creates this place in the middle of the scheme. Um, and, and it sits on the edge of the open space there as, a, as a, a focal point for the whole development. So that sort of draws a close that's, um, to, to, the, to the presentation. As I said, it's a very, very elaborate document. It's 50 odd pages long. Hopefully that gives you an overview of what we've done so far. So happy to get, take questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so questions. Um, I think we have several questions in the... Yes, Chair. Would you like me to read the first yes, one Yes, please, Chris. Thank okay. you. Uh, so the first question um, is, is the team aware that proposals have been made to open a new railway station for Fullbourne and that these proposals do not necessarily mean opening the old site? Opening a station in the Ida area is one of the more sensible options, especially given the housing there. Uh, we're, we're, this, the railway or the proposed station, I'm not aware of the proposed station, I'll be honest. Um, it's, it's not, I, I don't see that it affects the proposals. Um, we've, we've allowed a noise buffer against, because uh, we've got a noise report for the adjacent railway uh, along the north, northern boundary of the site. Um, and so I'm not aware that, that and certainly there's nothing in the, um, in any of the documentation so far that we've, that we've had to work to or the parameters plan or the outline planning permission that, that would affect the development. The development's turned out so that it looks out over the railway and that protects the rear gardens from the, any noise that's generated by the railway um, and keeps the noise levels down for those so people have their own private amenity area. Thanks Gary. The second question um, which has just moved up my screen, bear with me, is uh, does affordable housing include social housing, i.e. council housing, and if so, what proportion of affordable housing is social housing? Uh, yes, there's 40% uh, there's of, the, of the homes on the development are affordable housing. I'm not sure of the exact split between rent and, so, and shared ownership, but it, it's predominantly social rent housing. Um, we've already got several partners that we've already worked with, which are local housing associations, um, and it will be one of those. There's a vetting process that we have to go through in the Section 106 agreement that and um, it has to be one of the preferred preferred um, housing associations of the parish of the uh, local council, South Cams. Thank you. Um, can you uh, explain what tenure blind means and is any housing uh, for retired or uh, the older community? So tenure blind um, 
basically means that you should not be able to distinguish in any way, shape or form um, what's a private house and what's a share, what is an affordable house. So we don't consider ourselves a normal developer. We banned barge boards and fascias and low ceilings a long time ago. Um, and we, instead we use crafted details and brickies because those were post-war economies that were introduced to try and make housing or building housing cheaper. Um, so we make sure that all the detail that we include on our private houses is exactly the same as it is for our affordable housing. We also make sure that the affordable housing is pepper potted around the scheme rather than all concentrated in one position. Um, so that means that it will be very, very hard for somebody to walk on the development and say, ah, there's the affordable housing um, and there's the private housing. In fact, we've got five bedroom detached houses next door to some of the one bedroom social rented houses. So it's very much about integrating the, the social housing with the private housing. Thank you. Uh, and then we have a couple of questions related to uh, sustainability and design. Firstly, um, any electric car charging points? And secondly, yeah. how, how did you arrive at building heights and the use of roof spaces? And will solar panels be fitted by default? OK, um, so there is a uh, so, yes, there will be car charging points for every single property. Um, that's just something we're doing as standard. In addition to that, we're required through the planning conditions on the outline to have a, um, an eco show house, which will have a number of additional extras that people can purchase if they wanted. It could be and, and the things could be. Uh, extra PV on the property, extra solar panels on the property. It could be uh, water harvesting, harvesting systems. Um, but there's, there's a strong likelihood, and it's more than likely, that part of this site will be built to the new Part L building regulations anyway. Um, that in itself requires a 31% improvement in, car in carbon reductions. Um, and uh, that's coming into effect uh, in June of next year. So by the time we actually start building on this site, we will be building to that, that requirement. In addition to that, there's also a, um, a 30, uh, there's a planning condition that says that we have to provide 10% of all the energy via renewable energy sources, which means an array of um, solar uh, cells on most of the developments, uh, most of the houses on, on throughout the development. Thank you. Uh, just to go back on the question about older persons housing, is there any older persons accommodation in the scheme? Um, I can't remember it, to be honest. If there is, it's, it's, there's a few bungalows on the scheme um, required by the Section 106 agreement uh, in the, um, for the mix of affordable housing. The mix of affordable housing is already dictated. So it's a set number of four beds, three beds, two beds and one beds. And, and I would also imagine some of the one bedroom ground floor maisonettes would also be suitable for elderly because they're to the um, M42 disabled access standards. So there is an element there for them, but I, I, can't, I can't specifically remember if, if we have to provide some bungalows on this site as well. 